Welcome back to the Mr. Showtime Podcast. When you hear people say, I don't see color or I don't see gender, I want you to point and laugh. Because that's a sedated mindset. Those are nonsensical statements. Because what do you mean you don't see color? Are you saying that you don't recognize the fact that Mahatma Gandhi is an Indian man? Are you saying that you don't see, you don't recognize that Chuck Norris is a Caucasian male? Are you telling me that you don't recognize that uh, Kim Jong Un, the Korean president, is a Asian man? What do you mean you don't see color? You see, what's funny is the people who try so hard to convince others. You know, people who shout, you, you, who shout certain things from the rooftops, trying to convince others that they are a certain way or they are not a certain way, tend to be just that. Isn't it funny how most radical extreme vegans tend to be caught eating meat behind closed doors? The people who try so hard to convince you that they are a certain way end up being just that. Those who try so hard to convince people that they are righteous tend to be people that are the opposite of righteous. So I've been hearing people of the younger generation say certain things such as, oh no, you know, just during mid-conversation when I ask them certain questions. They would say certain things such as, oh no, uh, I, can't, I can't answer that because I don't see color. When I ask them, uh, if you were in danger and you were to call the cops, what gender of the cops, uh, what gender police do you prefer to come to your rescue, male or female? And they said, ah, no, I don't, I, I don't see gender knowing pretty darn well that they prefer a man, a male police officer, to come to their rescue. Why? Well, it's simple. The answer, the most simplest answer tends to, be, tends to be the most correct. A man tends to be more stronger and faster and more physically capable. So most people would inherently prefer a male police officer or a male firefighter or a male navy blue seal soldier to come to their rescue because men are physically more capable of those types of tasks, right? Now you have people of the generation Z going downwards, people from, you know, who are aged 24 and younger. They have these sedated approaches towards life such as, oh no, I don't see color, I don't see gender. Because they've been trained to think that all forms of discrimination are bad. And I'm here to tell you today that not all forms of discrimination are bad. Because as a heterosexual male, when it comes to dating, I prefer females, you know, the opposite sex, to, you know, date. That would be discrimination based on gender, which would be okay, it's totally fine, as a heterosexual male. Now, if you're homosexual, obviously, you're busy scoring all, own goals, you know, playing for the other team, that, I'm not, that's not what I'm talking about. Most people are heterosexual. Now, let's take it towards the whole color argument. 80% of people te uh, prefer to date within their own... Uh, race, right? Now that would be discrimination based on color or race or ethnicity. Nothing wrong with that. Most people prefer to date within their own tribe. That's just natural. There's nothing wrong with that, right? Now of course, the very same people who claim that they don't see color tend to be, you know, you would find if you if you were to ask them, okay, uh, so who do you date? Let's say for let, let's say someone who's Asian, right? An Asian person. I don't see color, and you find that they're dating an Asian person, 
right? I don't see gender. If it's a man saying this, you know, 80% of the time, 90% of the time, they're dating a female. So you you ask them, okay, uh, Asian man, uh, heterosexual man, since you say you, you don't see gender, have you ever dated a man? And they'll say no. Well, that would be hypo hypo hypocritical of your statement. Because all of your sexual partners you've dated are female. So that's a track record that you prefer females to date. So that means you're discriminating based on gender when it comes to dating. Which is perfectly fine if you are heterosexual, right? And all the women you've dated are, they look like you. They're Asian too. That would be discrimination based on race. Because you prefer to date within your own race. Which is perfectly fine. Now again, coming back to the whole, uh, I don't see color, I don't see gender statement, uh, which is actually uh, absolutely bullshit. You see, it's all it, these are all new ideologies that are coming uh, about. Ladies and gentlemen, do you understand that prior to World War II, the world used to be very savage. The world has survived eons and millions of millennials up to now because Human beings organize themselves according to a hierarchy. It's perfectly natural. Every every living sentient being does this. Now, today's society, we're being brainwashed to think that, oh, uh, 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 all forms of discrimination is bad. No, all forms of discrimination is not bad. Because there's certain people that are smarter than others, there's certain people that are intellectually superior than others, and there's certain people that are intellectually inferior than others. There's certain people who are athletically superior than others, you know, stronger, faster. There's certain people who are, you know, not so gifted in that department. So let me give you an example, right? Africans, right? People who look like me, people who share my skin tone, tend to be very naturally gifted, athletically speaking. Whereas with white people, naturally, it's not the case. They don't measure up to uh, Africans as much when it comes to, you know, athleticism. Which is why, uh, you know, white people created supplements and steroids. is to keep up or to, to catch up and or keep up with, you know, the talented Africans. Athletically speaking, that's how uh, supplements and steroids were invented. Another example is, you know, white people tend to be, you know, naturally more intellectually superior to black folks. Because look at what white, po uh, white people invented. With, look at what white people did with electricity. Inventions, uh, the cell phone vehicles, inventing the wheel, etc, etc, mathematics, all these m m uh, modern inventions. It's white folks, right? Clothing, uh, 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 the judiciary system, uh, modern medicine, right, etc, right? So, Asians and white people tend to be, you know, intellectually gifted compared to blacks. We're not equal, ladies and gentlemen. People are, 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 people have different attributes and, you know, different talents. Now, of course, you get the statistic, statistical anomalies. You know, so, so for example, you do get black folks who are, you know, the exceptions to the, to the rule, who have the best of both. Who have both the athleticism and the intellectual uh, capabilities and you have you know white folks who who uh, are the anomalies who are you know inherently uh, intellectually gifted and athletically gifted too right I happen to be the anomaly because you know during uh, primary school and high school you know uh, in, in sports 
I was naturally gifted. I didn't train much. And as time went by, as I grew over the years, I exercised my intellectual capability. I, I, I improved my thinking skills, my ability to, you know, think critically. Hence why I'm ahead of most people who look like me, intellectually speaking. Which is why I'm able to do down these videos and do these breakdowns, right? Some people have uh, given me compliments on the way I talk. People say like, oh, Musa, you know, you sound very intelligent. Where do you come from? You know, it's because most people who look like me, usually they don't sound like, like me, right? Now, coming back to the whole... Oh, I don't see color thingy. <laughs> you know what's funny? Give you a little short story. I was at a party at some house, at some girl's house. Um, let's just call her uh, Daisy, right? So let's at Daisy's house. Uh, we had this gathering. There's you know a bunch of people uh, there, and. You know, uh, we're at this price stand, right? Just you know, uh, chatting, right? And this uh, fire guy just uh, out of the blue just said to me that, uh, you know, Mbuso, in mid conversation, he said to me, like, you know, Mbuso, I don't discriminate uh, based on race because you know, if Sipo's late from work, to me, it doesn't matter if he's black or white, I'll hold him accountable the same way. And of course, I was taken back. I was like, uh, okay, so why would you tell me this? You, you just said that out of mid conversation. We were talking about sports, and all of a sudden, you know, there was like three seconds of awkward silence, and then you said that. Now I'm thinking to myself, why would someone try to convince me that they're not, you know, outward? Because that's what, what that's what he was trying to do. He was trying to convince me. That he's not racist. He doesn't discriminate based on race. Which to me is like, okay, yeah, uh, that's good. But why would you go out of your why would you go out of your way to try to convince me of such? I didn't ask you. It was no way a part of our conversation. He just threw it out there just randomly. Now to me, he had me thinking. Him being white, him telling me this because I'm, uh, you know, a black man, which kind of like made, made, made me put two and two together. Most white people, like, since they don't interact with most blacks, the only image they see in the mainstream media is in this portrayal of, you know, most black people are sensitive about, you know, racism. The only time where they see black folks is when black folks are acting clownery and buffoonerish and complaining about racism and then they go out there into the world they thinking that every single black person is you know racially sensitive which is not the case because I'm not like that and then you know they come across me they have these preconceived notions that oh okay let me watch my words so it's not to offend him and to me which is not the case which, like, th throws me off sometimes, I'm like, okay, that's good and all, but why are you try? Why, why are you going out of your way to try to convince me that you're not, you know, racist? I never said you were, I never assumed you were. You just bring this out of mid-conversation randomly, right? So it really had me thinking, uh, again, I put two and two together. Most white people, they don't, not too familiar with blacks, the, the, our image in the media as black folks is very terrible. So, you know, the only way that white people know us is, okay, most blacks are sensitive about race, so whenever you talk to them, we should, you know, watch our words so not to offend them, which to me, it's absolute garbage, because uh, with me, you can talk to me about anything, okay? You can talk to me about anything. If, it's, if, 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 if you want to make a point, and it, it vo involves... A point you want to make about, you know, uh, certain things about maybe pertaining race. It's okay, man. You can talk to me about it. 
I'm not gonna like sort of like blow up in your face like oh, I'm not racist. No, I'm not like that. I wasn't raised like that. I'm not like that. But I understand that since I belong to a particular group of people who tend to exude that type of behavior, those types of responses, white people have this this inherent assumption, right? Which to me, I'm here to clear the air. Not all of us think like that. I'm not like that. So, if you're a white person talking to me and you want to make a point about something, relax. Feel free to talk about it. Okay? I'm not just going to go, oh, this is it. No. Relax. Breathe. It's okay. You can talk to me about anything. So long as you may res remain respectful, right? <laughs> But anyway, and this applies to anyone, right? Talk to me about anything, okay? So yeah, we it, 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 this whole notion of uh, oh, uh, we're trying to make the world a better place because we used to live in traumatizing atrocities in the past where the world was just savage. Yes, the world was savage, but it was also you know operating on the natural order of things. That's how we've survived this far. And now we've been, since the early 2000s, people have been taught that all forms of discrimination is bad. No. When I date, I prefer women to date. Okay? 80% of people prefer to date people who look like them. That's perfectly natural. Right? So no, not all forms of discrimination is bad. Now, of course, with that being said, I'm not saying that you have to be an outright bigot or a misogynist or a toxic person, okay? I don't perform... I, 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 don't, I don't condone any forms of extremes, okay? Obviously, you know, be rational, yeah? But you, you get the point, yeah? So yeah, there's a, a whole slew of uh, younger people, Generation Z, people who are born from the year, let's say, 1990, 1999, going upwards, who have this whole, this, this wokest SJW mindset that, oh, there's no difference between the genders, uh, all people are equal, and we're all exactly the same, which we all know is all bullshit. And they're trying to teach you and groom you, even in the workplace. If you say certain things, such as women are just better caretakers and nurturers, they belong in the kitchen barefoot and pregnant, you get fired. You get cancelled. You get deplatformed. Right? If it, you get politicians who are trying to train you to think a certain way, such as one Ketanji Jackson, who can't even define what a woman is, it's all grooming, ladies and gentlemen. Right? Listen, it's okay to acknowledge that the certain people are better than others, certain people are smarter than others, certain people are stronger than others, right? Certain people are, you know, <laughs> more capable of doing certain tasks. In, in when I was in grade nine, they made us take an uh, uh, an aptitude test to to, to to determine which career path is more suitable for you based on your personality and who you are, right? That would be a form of discrimination based on your intellectual prowess. It's to help you, guide you where you fall best. Right? Now, of course, in today's society, there will be discrimination. Not all forms of discrimination is bad. Now, I fear for the young generation of today because, you know, this whole equalitarian movement that, oh, we should all be equal. They're all trying to get you to accept the future, the future order, the new world order of how they're going to be uh, doing things. A world where everyone is equal, everyone is, looks exactly the same. There's no, the, the, no one is, you know, everyone is just equal. Everyone is just the exact same. Such as like this, yeah. The exact same. Is that the type of world you want to live in? I don't know about you, but to me, that's kind of scary. 
which kind of brings me to my closing point. You know, I once had a, I once had a, I once had this dream where I was standing in the middle of nowhere in a crowd of people, and I was the only person who was who had color, and everyone else was in black and white. Everything was just gray and dull. Now, to me, that type of dream was, it's not so much that it was scary. It's not so much that it was horrifying, but it was more so disturbing to describe it best. Because I'm the only one in color, as you see right now, you know, as, as, I'm, as you see me right now. And then everyone else is in, in black and white and, and, and everything is just dull and gray. Much like one of those silent movies, one of those silent films. Is that the type of society you, you, you want to live in, where everyone is just equal and, and there's nothing uh, different about each other? You know what that's called? That's called communism. The New World Order is trying to usher in some communism, a communist regime. And they're slowly trying to get you to be susceptible to that idea. The more you hear these people talk about, these equalitarians talk about, oh no, I, I don't want to discriminate based on uh, uh, gender. <laughs> you have to think sometimes, you know. Not all forms of discrimination is bad. Now, I'm not saying that, you know, you have to treat people in a bigoted fashion. Of course not. But s certain things are just natural, Right? Certain forms of discrimination are like the, the, it, it, it's necessary, right? But anyway, if you if if you've made it this far, <laughs> thank you so much for watching. Listen me to ramble for like twenty.